Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest phone nerd. Now, but what up, guys? It's Crimson, and today we're going to be talking about something I'm passionate about my most hated phone. One of my mates recently asked, What's the worst phone you've ever owned? And this instantly gave me PTSD flashbacks to October 2018 and the Samsung S9, a phone so bad that over halfway through my contract, I gave it to my mum and bought an iPhone 11. So, in this video, I'll be telling you the good, the bad, and the dirty of the worst phone I've ever owned. Firstly, the design is gorgeous, and in a time where iPhones were just bigger versions of their original design back in 2007, the Samsung S8 and S9 innovated and stood out. Its sleek curved glass back and front with a polished aluminium frame looping around the phone looked amazing. Obviously mine looks a bit beat up because it's 5 years old, but trust me, these things looked amazing. I still think it kind of holds up, especially with the S9 Plus, which makes the chin and forehead look a bit smaller. And the masking for this was sick. The screen would seamlessly bleed into the background, and the forehead and chin would turn into brackets, saying Samsung S9. Front and center, you'll find a Quad HD 5.8 inch HDR10 Super AMOLED curved screen, which was industry leading when it came out. It uses this curve for features like edge lighting, which is actually sick. It would activate when you got notifications and when you played music, and was a genuinely cool use of the curved screen, especially when it would be face down. And watching YouTube and movies on here is a treat thanks to its taller aspect ratio of 18.5 by 9. It's closer to how wide movies are, yet still not as wide as your mum. On the back you'll find the camera. Honestly, some of my favourite photos ever came out of this thing, and it kind of holds up. Sure, night mode looks a bit dated by today's standards, but overall the camera system holds up and even surpasses modern cameras in the case of this photo. This was on the selfie camera, yet it's sharp and perfectly in focus. I can't even recreate this on modern phones. Like, how? Speaking of eyes, Samsung did something really cool with this camera, called Variable Aperture. Uh, you know when it's dark and your eyes, uh, your pupils dilate to let in more light so you can see better? Well, this camera does the same thing. It can switch between f1.5 and f2.4. The benefits of this is better low light performance and the ability to choose how much background blur you want on hardware level, like you can nowadays with software and portrait mode. The only big downside is video performance, but that's pretty standard for Androids, especially at this time period. The performance on this thing sucked. It would often freeze and animations would be laggy and the whole system UI would often crash. The performance on Snapchat was so bad you could press the shutter button and have time to visit the South Korean sweatshop worker and ask her five-year-old ass why it was taking so long. It got to the point where I'd carry and use my iPod Touch for Snapchat and other apps where it felt smoother. To make matters even worse, the updates were slow, especially if your phone was locked to a carrier like mine was. By the time I got Android 9, Android 10 was starting to roll out. And the real kick in the balls here is, when you do eventually get the update, you only get two years of them. This just wasn't a problem for brands like the Pixel and iPhone, which both have five-ish years of updates, which would all come out on the same day, regardless of carrier or country. And just to really shit at my Cocoa Pops, it seems that there was a class divide between iOS and Android, and what third-party developers actually cared about. Like if your phone is lucky enough to support Netflix, the animations aren't as polished, HDR might not even work, even if your phone has it. Animations are almost guaranteed to be rougher, the social media apps like Instagram or Snapchat, pictures you take look like shit, as they don't get processed. They pretty much just screenshot the viewfinder and call it day. It also sucks in other apps. There are still apps that don't use the full screen of taller phones like the S9. Uh, and 99% of the apps on iPhones do. And they've only had taller screens since 2019. In case you didn't know, Samsung uses a modified version of Android called One UI. They used to use one called Touch Kids. I mean TouchWiz. And it sucked. It's such a heavy skin, it's barely recognisable from stock Android, and it's a lot slower too. And it suffers from a trend I hate with a passion having their own version of system apps like Internet, Mail, Galaxy Store, Gallery, and Music. And those are just the ones that come with the phone. They've got plenty of their own versions of every Google app you can download, pretty much. And the kicker is the performance is so bad that they had to disable blur effect in a lot of places, as it would lag out the phone too much. The worst offenders, though, are Bixby and Flip News. Most of you haven't heard of Bixby. It's basically Siri, if she was born with extra chromosomes, and her mother drank moonshine while Sue was pregnant. Genuinely useless. But they thought this was such a good idea that they made a dedicated button for it, which they stopped you from being able to remap. How the hell did this get allowed? And it's also just the consistency. Like, the status bar and navigation bar would hardly ever match what was on screen. It looked cheap and unfinished, 
again, Apple never had the same issue. And when the software wasn't being annoying to use, the hardware was. The curved touchscreen would often register accidental touches, and it would run hot all the time thanks to Samsung's own processor it called Exynos. But only in Europe. In the US it would have one called Snapdragon, which pretty much every other Android manufacturer uses, because it's fucking good. Speaking of Exynos, the most annoying part is knowing that if I got this imported from the US with the Snapdragon version, it would have had better performance and better battery. Which now, apparently, if you've got an old Samsung in a drawer at home, it could be ready to blow at any minute. Like Shamima Begum's ex-husband. Even more like Shamima Begum, if you leave the safe island of Knox and try to mod your phone, you're not getting back in. And this is the biggest issue I have with Samsungs, and why I've not bought one since the S9. If you mod your phone at all, because maybe you're sick of waiting for a Samsung update, or you, your phone's not supported anymore, or you want to get stock Android on it, you can't go back. It completely invalidates your warranty. And if you do manage to get back to stock, stuff like Samsung Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Health, and more just stop working. Even Apple, the most locked down company in the world, lets you mod your phone and then go back to stock if you want. And so does pretty much every other Android manufacturer. Why do they have to ruin one of the best parts of Android? They also advertise something called Dolby Atmos, which in its loosest definition is stereo speakers. One at the top of the phone and one at the bottom. For the top one, they use the earpiece, which is barely loud enough to be heard. It's completely useless. The speakers themselves aren't even that good, and they're easy to cover as one of the main ones are on the bottom edge. For those of you that owned one, did you know they have a neutered version of 3D Touch? No? Because no one did. For some reason, they wasted the money making a home button force sensitive, which you can hard press to wake up the phone. They then completely undercut themselves by making it work if you tapped it lightly as well. So it's more redundant than your unemployed uncle who's cheating the benefit system. And it's never used for anything else. So wh wh why is it here? Why waste the money? In all fairness though, Samsung would later, on 2020, release the S20. Which now has four years of decently fast updates. One UI is a lot better now, even being one of the best aesthetically. And in 2024, the S24 is rumoured to have no Exynos version, as they've realised how crap they are. Honestly, using this phone again reminded me of things that I miss on modern phones. No hole punch or notch, no massive camera bump, and it has a headphone jack. And to top it all off, the charger came in the box. But I still see people using these phones in 2023. So maybe I'm just the asshole. So until next time, peace.